so we'll start off uh, the next session, uh, which is uh, keeping agrivoltaics to the core of your technology. Uh, we have four panelists. Uh, I'll hand over the mic to Sude, uh, who can introduce herself and uh, begin with the presentation. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Sude Nikon. I am an assistant professor at the uh, Electrical Engineering Department at Western. And my expertise is AI and machine learning. And today I'm going to walk through artificial intelligence and how it's going to um, help with smart and sustainable uh, agriculture. So um, the worldwide uh, population is uh, growing. and um, uh, the agriculture industry needs to meet the need for the food production, which is, uh, needs to be doubled by 2050. And um, there are some challenges in terms of the uh, resources shrinking, water, um, land, and greenhouse emissions, like ne negative impacts. Uh, so the solution is smart farming and sustainable uh, agriculture. So uh, using artificial intelligence um, uh, and um, computer vision, uh, we um, has evolved uh, this field. Like it helped farmers and agriculture to be smarter and uh, sustainable. Um, so we see that with advances in AI technologies and um, um, sensors like cameras, lidars, uh, that can be mounted on devices like drones and um, uh, like unmanned uh, ground vehicles, we can control the lands uh, autonomously. Um, so uh, this is uh, something that we call precision farming that has been around lately and it is improving uh, recently. Uh, so we see them in uh, scientific uh, reports and news that it is helping farmers in uh, saving some costs, um, having sustainable agriculture, uh, by making uh, right decisions at the right time and location. And um, also uh, using autonomous control uh, in uh, some challenging environments, uh, using uh, some uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, like ground vehicles. And just in the past year, it has been uh, 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 improving rapidly. So we see that we can have early detection of diseases, uh, we can have robots that can uh, do the weeding and like um, um, solve the issue of labor. And also we can have um, um, access to resources for everyone and connection between farmers and experts worldwide uh, in real time. Uh, so um, AI can also change the picture in agrivoltex uh, technology, so we can use them to control the uh, tilt of the, sense, uh, the solar panels. Uh, based on the shading patterns and based on the images that we get, and we can have the patterns of the shading and um, using uh, um, reinforcement learning to control the panels um, and uh, all improving the energy efficiency and also the agriculture production. Um, so uh, what is AI? Just to give you a uh, history of AI, so our artificial intelligence is something that has been around for years, uh, but in the past decade, uh, something that has changed the picture is uh, machine learning and deep learning, which um, is being used in everyday life, and this changed uh, everything. So in your mobile devices, you can search through your uh, phone and then uh, just type the name of your dog, and then it's going to search over thousands of images and finds the collection of images of your dog. So uh, deep learning is based on the, what human brain does, so learning from examples. So you provide examples uh, to the uh, human, and it learns uh, the features of different uh, objects and identify them. So we do the same thing in something that we call artificial uh, neural network. Uh, so it's the same neural network. It's the same neural system that a human brain does. So it has uh, neurons and connections, and then you provide the inputs, which are like, for example, the images of dogs and cats, and then it learns some features through mathematical functionalities, and then it finds uh, the output for you. 
Um, so uh, there are some design, design processes that engineers need to do uh, using the uh, scripting, um, and <clears throat> we have to decide about different parameters, such as uh, what is the network architecture. We have to decide how many neurons we want to use. Like we, are, we want to have some mathematical functions that, for example, to activate these neurons uh, to learn, and um, how many times we want to uh, train these models uh, based on the data. Uh, so. All of these processes are being done by the engineer and tested to find the ideal solution. And thankfully, uh, with Google and Facebook, there are tools that make this job feasible and efficient. Um, so then we have the network, and we want to train it using the data that, that we have. So uh, this, uh, based on the data set that you have and the scale of data, may take hours or days. And then you need some computational resources. So at a smaller sc scale, you can have it with a small computer and graphical processing units. And if you talk about larger scale, like a larger farms, uh, so then you can have cloud computing and get in, get, having access to the cloud computing services. Um, so just as an example, to conclude this, um, I provided an example of an application that we have in collaboration with Dr. Pierce and his amazing team. Uh, so we have um, the um, uh, monitoring the growth of uh, strawberries in vertical uh, grow walls. And then uh, we have some digital cameras that we put them in different places, taking pictures at different angles. And then we have these images. We have to do some pre-processing uh, using computer vision techniques, and then bring them to the manageable format. And then using AI models, we can detect strawberries in these images. And then <clears throat> we have the data set, so the team worked on the data set, so they had to label these data based on different diseases and different categories. Uh, so then the model can use these data uh, to be trained. So the, we have the deep learning model that is trained on this data set to just categorize the images uh, to different categories that you see here. For, for example, if it's a ripe or not ripe the, uh, uh, strawberry. Uh, so we also tested in this module on um, some data sets that we never used them in during the training process mm -hmm. and it worked and this is going to be expanded to the agrotonal that uh, was uh, somebody was talked about it in the previous panel uh, so uh, hopefully we can use this technology uh, to improve the growth of strawberries and thank you for your attention